Hi guys, hope you're well. I hope you had a good weekend and I, I can see by my uh, Instagram feed that lots of you've been cooking the dishes so thank you so much for sharing them. I got my man Axel again, he seems to be the only one I can be, <laughs> the only one I can persuade uh, to come and cook with me these days so well done Axel. Uh, very proud of you lad. Very proud. He's lost a tooth yesterday so give us a smile Axel. <laughs> He's like a wee rabbit. Mm. Right, okay. Um, really do. I'm, I'm struggling with lunches, like lunch is, becomes, you know, you need to be kind of a wee bit like know what's going on, you need quick lunches, you need something healthy, you need something fast, you need soups, the leek and potato soup, oh my goodness, what feedback we had on that. So I thought I'd do a soup and I thought this week I might do a few other lunch dishes as well because um, yeah, you really want something quick and fast but tasty. We're going to do Scotland's, one of Scotland's most famous soup. The Cullen Skink, Axel. You like a bit of Cullen Skink, don't you? Eh? It's often on the menu in great pubs. Um, we have it on the menu at our pub, the Scranon Scally, but it's a great dish for at home. So we're going to do the Cullen Skink. So we've got the, the smoked haddock, the tatties, onion, leek, and I've got some milk, two pints of milk, just simmering in the background there. You're going to do, if you're going to clean the leek, like we did for the leek and potato soup, you remember? and then give it a wash. I'll show you what to do there. And I'll prepare the onions. With the onions, I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to get them the same size. So I've cut the onion through the root, okay? And I keep the root attached to the onion, okay? Good. Okay, we'll sand out that, that's it. Okay, so you see, I've got the root attached to the onion, okay? Now, to cut the onion, you cut it three quarters of the way up, equal distance apart, carefully go the other way, and because you've got it still attached to the roof, it doesn't break. And now, when you go down to cut, everything will be roughly the same size. Now, I don't want to get all chefy on you today, but... We are going to try and get everything roughly the same size, especially the potatoes when we go to cut them, because if you have small ones and big ones, some will be completely overcooked and some will be raw. Right, brilliant. Look at that. Eh? Okay, now we're going to cut the leek in half, like so, and then we're going to cut it like this. Okay, so then we're going to take the different layers of the leek, and I want you to carefully cut it and try to get it the same size into nice squares like that. You think you can do that, Axel? So let me just put that one in there. Okay. This one. So that one you're going to cut in half that way and then cut it into pieces, okay? And I'm going to do the other onion. This is sweet, you know, quick and easy salad. I was thinking of doing a curry. Um, I was thinking of doing like a whole poached chicken, something, you know, like how you can get a couple of meals out of chicken. Um, and I'm still trying to persuade Michaela to cook again as well. Uh -huh. Because she had such an incredible feedback, incredible feedback. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ed? Okay, so we're nearly finished there. These. Now on to the tatties. Now this is quite important actually because you do, like I said earlier, you don't want to have potatoes all cut different sizes because they all cook at different ways. So first we're going to do what we call square off the tatties. So you're going to go all around each side and keep that, we'll keep that, we'll use that for something else. But you see, if you square it off, you give yourself a base, okay? So it's easier to work from. So then when you're cutting down, you can, you've can got more chance of getting everything roughly the same size. So there, you can cut that into three. What are we doing, Axel? Pretty good. Okay. Right. Meanwhile, while we're cutting the vegetables, we're going to put the haddock to poach, okay? So, behind here... 
Okay, so here we've got two pints of milk just gently simmering with a bay leaf. Okay, and I'm gonna infuse, I'm gonna infuse three, but because we are six, but you know, two, two for this would be absolutely fine already. You just add a bit more milk, but you really wanna cover it. Now, this is really, really important with this color skin. You just wanna poach the fish gently in the milk, okay? But we need a good amount of milk. Now, the most important thing here is that we keep the milk afterwards because you're going to have that wonderful smoky haddock flavour in the milk and that's what's going to make this dish a real success, okay? So gently just let that poach and we're going to finish the vegetables. What a lad! So I've lost Axel momentarily there, so I'm just going to finish cutting the leaves up. But again, I'm using every part of the leaf, the green bit as well, you know, and that's really, it's really delicious as well. And allows us to, with the potatoes, when I've squared them off as well, you'll see that I'm left with some trimmings. Now, that you could keep, you could keep that for your leek and potato soup that we made uh, last week. Or what you could do is you could drain them off and then get them roughly all the same size and then just saute them to, to create like potatoes or sorted potatoes finish them with chopped garlic and parsley and that would be a lovely little side dish to go with something so really don't there's always a use for something and it's it's a great way of cooking that is that you know always having that no waste uh, mentality is really really important right so we've got two onions one leek and i think we had about four large tatties there as well okay so the haddock poaching now if you had some thyme you could infuse some thyme in there some peppercorns all those kind of things but we just want to poach it gently okay so i've got my plate ready for when i take the haddock out right now we're going to start cooking the veg so everything will come together so a little dash of oil and a knob of butter okay and we're going to start with the onion first, okay? So in with the onion. And we're going to sweat that down nice and gently. And I'm a real believer in like separating the vegetables, each vegetable, onion, mirepoix vegetables that we call onion, carrot, celery, those kind of things. I, I don't like to mix them all together and sweat them. I like to sweat them individually because each one has its own unique flavour, okay? Now we're going to season the onions at the beginning now, yeah? And I keep, I keep saying this, I keep saying this, that, you know, little bits of seasoning all the way through the cooking process. Not just at the end of the process, go and taste it, it's got no salt, and then throw in a lot of salt. It doesn't work like that. You need to season as you go to release the, the flavours, okay? So we're going to cook that. Sweat the onions for about two to three minutes there, nice and gently, no colour. So the onions are actually, in a way, almost confit, you know, they're just beautiful and you've got that lovely buttery look to it as well. Now we're going to throw in the leek that Axel did. Okay, which is great. Okay, so now very carefully our haddock. The vegetables are cooking, we're going to carefully remove the smoked haddock, okay? So now we can carefully, and you can use a spoon and a spatula or something because it will be very fragile. It, it will flake, as they say. Look at that. It smells amazing. One of Chef's little secret smoked haddock because it can bring flavor to absolutely anything. You know, you know like when you have a really good fish pie, the secret is the smoked haddock because it brings that flavor. Smoked by uh, another thing we use it in is a uh, omelet Arnold Bennett, but you, which is a classic um, omelet with a uh, smoked haddock, absolutely delicious. Um, but also you could, do, you could do an omelet with smoked haddock in it as well, which is really delicious, but let's get that cooking. Now, look at the, the vegetables there, ready, okay? So they're all lovely, full of flavor, nice colors. And now we're in with the tatties. Mm. 
really important. We keep the milk that we poached the haddock in. That is how we get the flavor into this dish. So there we take the, the liquid and we pour that on top of the tatties like so. I've lowered the heat here, not lowered, lowered, but not full pelt, because when milk boils, we know that it will rise, it will split, and it will get a little bit messy. So we're gonna leave that to cook a little bit. Okay, yes. So in there, we've got the onions and the leeks that we cut, and then we've got the potato that we cut into dice, and then we covered it in the milk that we poached the fish. So we're gonna cook that until the potato's cooked, all right? Okay. And what we've got to do now, is with our haddock, we've got to carefully flake it into pieces. Now I like big chunks of haddock, but we just want to check that there might be the odd bone. So once that soup's cooked, we've got the haddock like this. I've loved so much some of your uh, your photos and your messages and videos that you you put on Instagram. Um, I love seeing all the kids cooking. I also like seeing the adults cooking, you know, because we're funny as adults, you know, we don't like to go out of our comfort zone, we're the same in anything, you know, and uh, it's great to see people just really pushing their comfort zones and giving something a try um, in these crazy times. Got to admit today, Monday has been really hard, I mean, I'm struggling a wee bit now, it's, uh, whew, it's hard, it's hard, you go for your walk, you do... You do your things around the house, you try to do your work, you do stuff with the kids. I am climbing the walls. Anyone who knows me will know I am climbing the walls. Anyway, thank you. My thanks to my beautiful wife who's keeping me in line, shall we say. Isn't she? <laughs> huh? <laughs> okay. And of course, we've got to start thinking about Easter next weekend, what we're going to do. And... Um, I was thinking that I would definitely love to do on Sunday, on Easter Sunday, I would love to do a slow cooked shoulder of lamb, maybe with some potato dauphinoise and a French bean salad. So just giving you a wee heads up, I know it's Monday, but you know, I, all I know to think about is family, food and football. And football's been taken away from me and the family's driving me up the wall. So I'm already thinking about Sunday's menu for Easter Sunday, but I'm going to be doing shoulder of lamb, so if you can think about where you would get your lamb from, and um, we can talk about that later on in the week, okay? Good lad. Now, we've got a little bit of milk left there, so pop that in the soup, so no flavour escapes. The cooking process won't take that long, but you just have to be aware that you keep an eye on it, because if milk catches on the bottom, it burns really easily and it does really influence the flavor of the dish. So we just want to keep it gently moving. And I always like to use a spatula. And I always have to say that with my chefs, you always got to clean the sides of your pan because if you don't clean the sides of your pan, it will burn. And especially something like milk, it will burn. And keep tasting. You know, you really have to learn the seasoning, the palates. And it's the same when I'm talking with my chefs as well. I'm saying, trying to teach them that young chefs, they all want to do like, Instagrammable food that they see, but the first and the most important thing is seasoning. You have to learn your palate, so that's really important that we do that. Now, now if you're eating the soup today, I would, when you check the potatoes, I would cook them all the way through. Ooh, so, if you're eating the soup tomorrow, I would just cook the potatoes slightly under because you're going to then cool the soup. You're then going to leave it in the fridge overnight and then you're going to boil it again, which will cook on the potatoes and slightly overcook them. So little things, but it doesn't really matter. So those potatoes there are nearly cooked. So we're going to just let that cook for another minute or so before we add all the, before we add all the haddock and a good twist of black pepper. So that is cooked. Carefully pull that off. Okay. Now you see we've got all that lovely leek and onion and potato and the potatoes are only just cooked there because if they are overcooked they will disintegrate. Now I'm going to add all that lovely haddock back to the soup. And like so. And black pepper. So, so important with this. It's just, 
It's just crazy. Now, you remember we did those poached eggs with the leaky potato soup? Do you know what? And the poached egg would go lovely in this. Or even, a, you know, just a, a soft boiled egg would be delicious. Look at that. And then serve up. Get a big bowl. Look at that. And a little bit of parsley. Another twisted pepper. And there we go. A proper hearty lunch. Cullen skin, one of Scotland's favourites. I want to see you doing that, guys. See you soon.